Welcome to week three. <laughs> we are going to go over this week's breakdown of teacher to do's, student to do's, and step by step for um, being successful this week. We are focusing on building a fitness machine. So what that means is you will be in, uh, incorporating the codes from week one, week two, and a brand new code from this week. You're combining them all together to create a fitness machine in which students will be doing jumping jacks, crunches, and toe touches. And Emily had a note to make about some minor changes that we made to the activity. Yes, uh, and the original download of your coaches kit there was 30 seconds instead of 10 seconds there for your jumping jacks. Um, when I talk about the code, I will talk about why that is a mistake, um, or you can keep it as is, but it is 10 seconds for jumping jacks. And you'll be getting a new PDF sent out with a recording. Yeah, if I had the choice between 10 seconds of jumping jacks versus 30 seconds of jumping jacks, I will always choose 10. So <laughs> it's, it's a highlight for everyone. All right, so the activity breakdown. Um, we have the code image so that you can build it yourself. We also have it available for download. Um, further along in the PDF, you'll also see a code download link so that you have all three bits of code from week one, two, and three all together. Um, we have the demo videos. This time we have it for jumping jacks, crunches, and toe touches. We have our class tracking sheet. So it's the same document you've been using. You'll be using week three's uh, tab, which looks slightly different since students will be including their scores for all three activities. We have our submission link for when you're all done. And then you just gotta wait and see if your class won the golden spot. Ooh. So the teacher to-do list, it's just like every week, except this is your the final push. Um, you're gonna introduce this week's activity, record your students' scores, submit your final scores, and make sure you're tweeting us, um, showing us videos and photos of what you and your class are doing. We've been loving the tweets that have been coming in. Um, we really wish we could be there and join you all, but we're so glad we get to live vicariously through the internet. So that's always really nice to take a peek into someone else's classroom. The student to-do list is they got to build or download the code. They're going to record their scores in their student tracker. And if they have time, they can do the found art challenge to earn your class extra points. So this is a great opportunity to uh, get ahead in the scoreboard. If you notice that maybe your class is slightly behind another class, you can turn in as many art challenges as you can and try to earn those extra points. All right, so week three, we're building a fitness machine. So students are gonna build their own fitness machine and incorporates a 30 second timer with a 10 second countdown and a stopwatch for three different exercises. So for round one, you'll be using the code from week one, um, seeing how many jumping jacks you can do in 10 seconds. So round two is week three's code. You would think it would be week two, but it's week three. So gotcha. it's gonna be- Gotcha. gotcha. We're trying to keep you on your toes. Um, week three is crunches. This time you're gonna see how many you can do in 30 seconds. It's very similar to week one's code, only this time it is not gonna count out loud. And then round three will be week two's code, which is the stopwatch. You're gonna see how long it takes you to do 10 toe touches on each side for a total of 20 toe touches. So just to make things, just to break it down and make it a little bit more simple, splat one is gonna be your count out loud from 10. Splat two is your 30 second countdown. Splat three starts your stopwatch and then splat four is gonna stop your stopwatch. All right, it's Emily's time to shine. So I'm going to stop my screen share and pass it over to her. Awesome. All right. So, for this week, we are actually going to start out with our week one code. Um, you could also choose your week two code to start off with, um, but I chose week one because it's a little bit longer. And so, all right, are you able to see my screen too, Anne? Mm -hmm. Looks great. So I've got on one side of my screen, I've got loaded up the full code image. This is downloaded from um, the coaches kit. Um, you'll see an image of this code and you'll see there's a link there to download it. Um, so I just downloaded this just to have it on the side for reference. You'll notice that this is all of our week one and this is already saved from whenever we did week one a couple weeks ago now. Um, so we're gonna start off with that. Um, and 
I'm gonna really quickly build week two again, and I'm just gonna do it live on the screen so you all will be able to watch that. Yeah. I'm sorry, it's my dog. <laughs> Hi, Drink It. Her name is Drink It. She just had five teeth pulled. She is, she, she's delicate right now. <laughs> that sound is not my stomach, it is my dog. <laughs> I mean, that was definitely, that was definitely on my mind, but I wasn't going to judge you if it was your stomach. It's, it's almost dinner time. All right, so light splat one. And then light splats again. I am again just building out week two code again really quickly. Um, so for this one, we're lighting up our splats when the program starts. And these colors right here are just green and red. So I'm doing that right now. And you'll notice I already have a bug. So this one is when splat three is pressed. We don't need that one yet. We actually need when program starts. Oops. We're gonna need a second when splat pressed down here. That one's gonna be for splat four. All right, so when our program starts, we're gonna light up splats three and four different colors. And then we are going to be lighting up our splats again whenever the spot is pressed. So I'm dragging out another block. And I'm going to be playing the sound ref whistle this time. Whenever we press on it. And I think we chatted a little bit about this last week, or actually to Ann and Ryan, I think you both did, um, about how the sound is actually coming out of splat two if you were to have physical splats connected. Um, I do know a lot of you are remote right now, so you might not even notice this in your code. Um, but if you do, um, I'm just gonna switch this to splat three just for it to match. Um, again, it should not impact your code at all. I'm really sorry. Oh, Trinket. <laughs> you just sound so pitiful. I know. All right, so we're gonna set our stopwatch to zero. And we're going to stop our stopwatch here. Again, if you've got any questions on any of these things, let us know. So this one, when we stomp on it, we're gonna light it up yellow. And this one is gonna be lit up green. So for this time, you'll notice I also have a boo-boo here. So that should be flat three when it's pressed. I'm gonna duplicate this. For this one, you'll also notice this is also, did you all talk about this last week too? Uh, yes. We decided that it doesn't, again, remotely, it doesn't um, cause too much of a change, um, but feel free to um, change the spot number so that it makes sense to you. Duplicate and playing sound. And then we are gonna stop our stopwatch. Well, there we go. So we've recreated this code again. When our splat three is pressed, our splat three should light up with the color yellow to play a ref whistle sound on splat three. Um, it should reset our stopwatch to zero and then start our stopwatch all whenever we press on splat three. When we press on splat four, we're gonna light up our splat four with the color green. Um, again, that's a minor change from here. Um, another bug that we caught. Um, and so you're going to be lighting it up with splat four, color green, playing the sound, ref whistle on splat four or whichever splat if you're remote, doesn't really matter. And then you're stopping your stopwatch. So I'm going to really quickly check this. So whenever um, I press on splat three, it looks like I'm lit up yellow and we're good to go. And then it stopped whenever I pressed on splat four. Looks good. And yeah, that's the trouble sometimes with duplicating sets of blocks. It's like you have to make sure you go through and change the numbers. 
Oh yeah, definitely. Um, for this one, you'll notice that we have plat three and four lit up as red. And then we should also have from our um, week one code, the a lit up cyan. So you'll notice we're good to go here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, just to make this code match all of the code from the image, I'm gonna scoot these over. So we are looking at splat two in the center. And then we'll zoom back in again. All right, so like Tuan mentioned, the code for um, this week is again, well, your code for this week is all of the code. I do want to mention that. So in order to complete all three, all three activities, you do need to be able to use the entire code. Um, so this is a new snippet from for this week. So the countdown from 30 seconds is brand new, um, but you do need to use the whole code. So I do want to mention that first. Um, and it is pretty sim similar to our out loud countdown timer that we used before, but this time it's not going to be counting the whole time. So um, it will be counting, the computer will be counting, um, but it won't be telling you what number you're at. Um, so it's just going to do a countdown and then play a sound. So pretty simple. So we're gonna drag out a when program starts block. And now you'll notice that we now will have lots of splats lit up whenever you press start. So we're gonna drag out a light block, change this to splat number two, and then have it light up purple. And then when our splat two is pressed, so I need to drag out a when splat press block. we need to do these things. So our splat needs to light up a color so that we know that we've pressed on it. Um, we need to have some sort of sound to signal that we need to start. And then we need to have our countdown. So that all needs to happen. And then we need to have something to indicate that the countdown's over. So that's really what all the rest of our blocks do. So let's drag out a light block. We're gonna have this one be for splat two as well and light this one up yellow. And then we're going to use a ref whistle block again. So I'm just going to duplicate this one. Pull it over here. I'm going to change this to splat two. Again, doesn't really matter if you're remote, but good practice. And then we're going to have our countdown block. So the way these countdown blocks work, um, we didn't technically have one over here, um, but we could. So we could have a countdown. The countdown is just gonna run up here, right up in our clock's place, whatever that's called, clock place. Um, so, uh, but we could have totally used this exact same thing for our week one code, just choices that we made. So we're going to change this to be 30. And then we are going to put in a delay. Um, and this delay, is super important because if you don't have it, you're automatically going to get that cheer sound. And we don't want that. We want the cheer to happen whenever our countdown is actually up. And then we're going to play our sound. And we're gonna have this happen on spot two again. And this is going to be a sports sound again. And it's cheer. And then our very last thing is to light up our splat purple. We've already got a block like that that does that. So I'm going to duplicate it and snap it in down here. So let's see if this makes sense. When our splat two is pressed, we're going to light up splat two with the color yellow, play a ref whistle sound to let us know that we started, count down from 30, delay 30 seconds, and then we should hear a cheer and our splat should turn a different color. So let's see if that happens. So we're gonna press run. Cool, so we've got this lit up the color purple. That's a good sign. Awesome, so now we see that our clock place is counting down from 30 seconds. And we should see that once it gets down to zero, we should hear our cheer really soon after. What's your favorite sound of the sounds? I think you've asked me this before and it changes every time. I think today it's probably the cat sound. Cool. So I heard a cheer sound um, and our splat is purple again. So that's, that's great. 
So let's now look at this full code. I'm again gonna pull up our PDF really quick, um, just so that we have our instructions of what we need to do for each one. So um, in round one, you're going to be counting jumping jacks and the number of jumping jacks that you can do in 10 seconds. So, oops. That's going to be using this code. We know it's going to be using that code because it's 10 seconds. Um, and so that's going to be an out loud countdown timer. Do you think there's a market for the soft and beseeching sounds of a dog? <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to find out. Right back to us. Yeah. Let us know you think of cricket. Do you, would you like a block that is just the, the softly pathetic sounds of a dog whining? <laughs> <laughs> so needy. Um, all right. So we know for round one, we're gonna be using that first chunk. For round two, this is gonna be counting how many you're going to be doing. And then you're gonna be recording your highest score. Um, so we're not checking time for that one. So you're just gonna be counting again. And then, and then for round three, you're doing toe touches, which we already talked about. So the next thing I'm gonna pull up is I'm gonna scroll down here and I'm gonna show this wonderful little image we've got here of the virtual splats app. Um, and I'm going to rebuild this for you all really quick. So we've got four splats that we need to pull out. And then we've got four. All right, I'm going to unpause my splat presses. Again, this checkbox um, just lets you move around all your splats without starting countdown timers and all those types of things. All right, so I'm gonna change my background. I'm gonna maybe I'd be in, be in space. So we're gonna be doing space exercise. And then- also my favorite. Yeah. Um, so we are going to be basically starting from this side and then going down to this side. Um, any any other things that I'm missing, Trim? Uh, no, it all makes sense to me right now so far. Okay. So um, when I press run, they should all light up their colors. Cool, that makes sense. So we're going to be stepping on the blue one first because we know that's our countdown timer. And so that's jumping jacks. 10, 9, 8, 7, yes. 6, Sitting jumping 5, jacks. 4, 3, 2, one. Okay. It looks like we had no hands. <laughs> now we're going to be pressing on splat two, and that's going to be our 30 second countdown timer. All right. And this one was crunches. I'm going to be doing standing crunches. And that's going to be great. I wish I had a rocking chair. <laughs> So ideally, your students are doing real crunches. <laughs> no longer be in video. We miss our lovely faces. So we're doing our crunches. Here we go. Woo Almost done. All right. So now we need to be doing toe touches. Toe touches is going to be a weird one. So I'm going to do sitting toe touches. And then we're going to press on three to start. So we're going to be doing 10. So let me know when you're done with your, your, that's 20 total, I guess. Okay. Right. <laughs> you need to keep up. I'm almost done. I did it. <laughs> you're done? Yeah. Oh, I'm slow. Okay. So I'm going to hit stop. So that took us 21 seconds. Okay. That's not bad, like a second per foot. Yeah. So this one in terms of tracking, for the first two, you're recording how many you do. So for one and two, we're going to be counting our number of jumping jacks, counting our number of crunches. And then whenever you press on splat three, your students are going to be doing their toe touches and they don't need to be paying attention at all to how many toe touches they do, except for making sure they get to 20. Um, but they're going to be recording their time. So they do need to pay attention. They have to do 20 or one for each side. 10 for each side. 10 for each side, yes. Yeah. All right. 
any questions? Was that clear? It was clear to me. Um, once you, yeah, this is definitely something where once you get the hang of it and like kids understand what um, the pattern is, then they should be good to go. You start off with your jumping jacks and then you do your crunches and then you do your toe touches. Yep. And you can line them up like this. Um, if you're lucky enough to be able to have your physical spots around, you can line them up on the floor and you can have students go through in different rotations. Um, but if like a lot of us, we might be doing it from home. So lining them up on the virtual spots app is a great option. And please send us photos of your kids doing the real exercises and not the poor man's version of the exercises that Emily and I just did. So <laughs> yeah. um, I am very out of shape. <laughs> just so everyone knows. <laughs> um, yeah, and so say that you don't wanna do all the things that I just did, you can click on download code and you can download this entire thing as is. You're just gonna be clicking this button um, and it will all look exactly like this, like we just built it. Um, so, and last week I shared with everyone that um, Coach Napier, his kids built the code because they wanted to see how many of the air punches that he could do. So this is also a great opportunity for kids to build the code themselves and then maybe have family members um, participate in the exercise as well. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. And this week is pretty All right. bright. So like really only need, so this piece, um, which is also being able to build a countdown timer is super helpful for lots of games in the future. So you'll be using this code again many, many times with spots. Um, but just to wrap things up, Tam, before I pass this back off to you, I'm going to save this as week three. Mm -hmm. Modifying my week one code. I'm going to hit save. And then I'm going to go back into my projects. And I'm going to sync to my game locker. So you'll notice my week one and now week three are no longer there. So I'm going to hit sync. And we're good to go. All right, I'll pass this back off to you. So um, the last thing is just a Q&A. So I'm gonna share my email and Emily's email. And uh, do I know how to do that? Yes, I do. Maybe, share screen, there we go. <laughs> so uh, I am Tuan at unreleasedstudios.com. So feel free to reach out to me about any questions about um, implementation in your classroom, um, resources that you would like to see or resources that exist and you would like some help walking through them. So any questions about implementation or making sure that you and your kids feel empowered while using SWATS, I'm the one to go to. And then Emily at unrulystudios.com and she just, she just does everything. She knows everything. So feel free to reach out to Emily as well.